Number five. Now listen to this one. When we pray, we schedule the needed help for every season. Ah, this is a powerful one. When we pray, I want to show you a mystery now. We schedule through prayer the needed help for every season. Acts chapter 9 from verse 10 to 11. While I was studying, preparing my notes, the Lord opened my eyes to this scripture. I'd never seen it in that light. Watch this. This was Saul of Tarsus, who had now become Paul. Listen. When Paul encountered God, he became blind. And he went to the house of Judah and stayed there. And the Bible says there was a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias. Listen carefully. The Bible says, and to him said the Lord in a vision. Ananias, and he said, behold, I am here, Lord, verse 11. I like this. He says, and the Lord said unto him, watch this, arise and go to the street which is called straight and inquire of the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. Why will you go there as a helper? Read the last sentence. For behold. Behold. He did not just go there. The man was blind. And he said, Lord, you asked me to preach the gospel. Being blind is unnecessary. But he was praying. And while he prayed, in response to his prayer, verse 12, watch what was happening. Now, unknown to Paul, his prayer was helping to negotiate something serious here. And the Bible says, while Paul prayed, he had seen in a vision. Who did he see? A man. There are times you see angels, but there are times you need to see a man. It was in the place of prayer that he saw help coming. He saw a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he may receive his sight. And Ananias began to argue verse 13. I have heard of this man, the many things how that he has done. Watch this. While that is happening, Paul was still praying. Do you know? Watch this. Paul had seen Ananias coming in a vision. But physically, Ananias refused to go. And he was saying, God, I won't go. This man, I've heard of the things he has done. If Paul had stopped praying, Ananias would reject that offer and go away. And leave Paul blind there. And he would remain there. And if you were to interview Paul, Paul will say, I don't understand. In the place of prayer, I saw a vision that Ananias should come. And Ananias has refused to come. It's not enough to see. You must pray it to happen. Many of you saw helpers coming. And then immediately you saw it, you stopped praying. Because you said, since I've seen it, it must come to pass. No. While that is happening, there are still negotiations happening. Ananias refused. I have heard of the many things that he has done. But the Lord said to him, verse 14, let's hurry. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. Who gave Ananias this, the explanation? God. Who else would have given Ananias that explanation? Nobody. It was because God said he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. He said, oh really? I've changed my mindset. Can I tell you? There are some of you, the only person who can explain to your helpers is God. Because the kind of reports they have about you, about your family, about your business, it will be over their dead body to help you. At that point, you need to pray. Who is learning? You need to pray the presence of helpers and say, Lord, it is by yourself you will speak to men. I like what promise says here when it comes to take offering. He says, may God put it in the heart of men to help you. It sounds like a very simple prayer, but it's a very powerful prayer. A rich man will not help you because he's rich. He helps you because God puts your matter in his heart. Are we together? Yes. I remember many years ago, a pastor friend called me and humorously was saying, he said, Apostle, you have to pray for me. I traveled to America and someone saw me and he, was, he had discussed that he wanted to give a seat to Apostle. Can you imagine? And the man tried, tried, tried to make sure that he would bring the seat before my pastor friend would travel and package a very quality seat. 
and gave him. He said, please help me and give apostle. And when he came, he said, no, this is not fair. This man saw me, not day one, not day two. Are we together now? This man saw me, oh, he knows that I'm a man of God too. And he told me he would give a seed. And not even that, okay, he gave apostles and then he said, you're on for apostle and greet him that I've been blessed by his life. So when he came, he was a very nice man. We we're just talking and, and I was saying, well, he said, no, you have to pray that prayer for me. How can somebody give me a seat to come and give you? <laughs> oh, my help has come. Oh, I want to share with you one story. I won't tell you all of it. Sit down. Many years ago, I was praying, praying seriously, and the Lord spoke to me. Until that time, no one had ever blessed me beyond a certain amount. I'm sharing this to the glory of God to help you. I remember it was in a place of prayer. The Lord spoke to me, and he said, son, the same way I have raised people to support the work, I am going to be putting a mandate on people to support you as an individual, not the ministry, you as an individual. I was happy, but I knew already that if I kept quiet, that word would never come to pass because men are very wicked. And there are times that God will have to impress upon their spirits. Are we together? I remember taking out time to pray. One day, somebody i was praying quite honestly minding my business and then i remember that time i saw an alert and it was quite a generous alert i just thought to myself my god i even left the money there first so that in case you say, i don't want any body to come nobody had sent that kind of amount at once and i said what is this a few months later the same kind of amount came again a few months later, the same kind of amount came again and then it stopped. And from that time, people would say, God has placed it upon my heart. I said, ah, this thing works. So it works. You don't pray alone. Huh? But you see, because we are in the business of priesthood, there is a provision to see that we serve God conveniently as we bless his people. And let me tell you the truth from that time I concluded that not all men are stubborn Lord leave the stubborn ones and go to the ones that have vowed that you should use them don't, that's you've heard me I've advised you financially don't tie your mind to one person and say Lord auntie a uncle B must bless me it's a recipe for disaster because an individual can of their will say I won't help this family even though I have the means. Okay, we respect your will. Carry your trouble and go. Lord, raise help from another place. And where there are no men for our sake, raise stones. I'm prophesying to someone in this season, unexpected sources, for the sake of your focus, your vision, your assignment, may my God raise strange help for you. Strange help for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sit down. I don't share these stories to brag. Sometimes it's, a, it's very difficult, but it's important to share them sometimes. At least you understand. It is to encourage you. I remember when we were preparing for Sound of Revival, one time I got rich that there was somebody who wanted to be anonymous. And he wanted to find out the amount we were paying for the venue. He wanted to foot all the bills. I said, no, you cannot pay. We've already paid the money for the venue. Even though it was very expensive, but we thank God for the honor of being able to do that. But how does somebody give that kind of amount, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you want to be anonymous? No, we're a responsible ministry. I have to know who you are to tell you thank you. He said, no, the man said he wants to be anonymous. He just wants a way that even though we have paid, he still wants to give the money. Every helper has relatives who are begging. And he will not give them. People don't come because they have. They come because their hearts are touched. 
are you learning nobody gives stop saying this man with all the money he has is not giving me you are wasting your time go to the father of spirits in the place of prayer lord every spirit is subject to your word your name place it upon the heart of any man you choose raise help for me in this abuja i don't want to compromise raise help for me you think god is not faithful to raise help for you except it's not the god of heaven you can call for help in the place of prayer no job but pray you are not lazy your cv is there now i hear a lot of talk and sometimes let me say this sometimes um we make mockery of prayer and i know what those who say that i know what they mean to say you know we make a lot of mockery on prayer we say everything is not prayer 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 i understand that most people say that because of the fanatism that has driven the prayer ministry and the inefficiency that has come from using prayer as the only key so i understand what they are trying to say when it has to do with the economy there is productivity relationships transformation competence value understanding exchange these are valid principles nobody who wants to prosper and just praise alone uh, you are not using the keys effectively but another side again is there are people who have now said no 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 forget about it it's not about prayer it's not true it's not true the bible says in everything by prayer everything is finance part of everything yeah i've told you that where prayer is not the key prayer becomes the hand that holds the key even if you have a key you need a hand that turns it are we together now so I'm, I'm teaching you i owe it to teach you there are people who literally prayed their way to favor favor brought the resources wisdom multiplied it are we together now don't sit down and you are under fire there are some of you right now who with all due respect maybe you are owing millions of naira tens of millions hundreds of millions of naira you think it's productivity that will take you out productivity will help you start again when you are free what you need is prophecy you need to cry on to god for help otherwise you will die in that pit are we together at last master it was borrowed the men were hard working the purpose of the axe was for them to cut a tree they didn't ask god to cut the tree for them but when the axe fell it stopped because there was no ability to cut the tree again and there was a miracle to restore the axe head after it was restored they now continued cutting you do business when the capital is there when the capital is not there you are stunted you need help you need men you need systems and structures to help you are we together now there are many of us the hardship around your life is a direct testament that there is no help no help in ministry no help in your home nobody has been concerned about your welfare nor that of your children are we together now don't waste your time selecting men by yourself i have taught you this find a way of believing it don't waste your time trying to select men look on to jesus and say father you are the king of kings and the lord of lords i pray that you place it upon the heart of someone do you know till today i still pray for helpers i still pray for helpers because i need helpers the higher the assignment the higher the help that is needed in every ramification financial helpers spiritual helpers there are people today god placed a burden upon them to pray for me as their assignment are we together now as an assignment i'm not saying what you do occasionally as their assignment so when we talk of help we're not just talking of you cannot pray enough for God will raise people, raise intercessory groups. There are some of them, I don't even know them. But God has placed it as a burden. Pray for apostle. That is your assignment. Say, Father, send help to my destiny. I want you to pray a mini from your heart and watch what God does. Say, Father, send help to my destiny. Pray that last one before I give you the last key. Please pray. Ah, send help. Lord, send help. I need help in ministry. I need help. 
over my finances send help some of you you may not need money but there are other things you need very important things you need that make for life and godliness strategic connections you need help access you need help endorsements you need help the goodwill of strategic people you need help in Jesus name we pray when we pray we schedule the needed help for every season every assignment God gives koinonia has a financial requirement my own upkeep as his child and as his servant has a financial requirement it is my responsibility to in the place of prayer call for the needed help if you are too arrogant to call for help then you will find out that it will look as if God sent you and left you alone he says when I sent you lackest thou anything let me tell you the truth I am convinced that for as long as I serve the Lord I will not lack bread to eat I'm not serving him because of bread but for as long as I am on this assignment I will not lack bread to eat I'll love him whether there's bread or not sincerely but I will not lack bread to eat and that does not just mean bread for myself for everyone that I have a responsibility over I will not lack bread to give are we together this is my understanding with God this is my agreement with God that I love him more than bread but for as long as I'm serving him sincerely with all my heart I will not lack bread to eat it doesn't matter what happens even if the earth is brass and the heavens iron I will not lack bread to eat you have to believe this when I sent you lackest thou anything and they said nothing this is not because I'm a preacher preaching is only a vehicle to serve the Lord when you serve him sincerely he blesses your bread and your water he takes sickness away from you the days that he has a portion for you he sees to it that you fulfill 